He arises, it gives him a chance of getting away from his direct opposite. And number three, I think the great benefit of the solar run is that having one possession and got clear of your opponent and you have an open space in front of you on the pitch, it gives you a great opportunity of making ground and then playing your ball. Right inside. Players in this exercise solo to an obstacle and then back to the point of departure. thus giving the coach the opportunity to observe if the basic movements of the skill are being performed correctly. Players here solo in and out around obstacles developing their balance and awareness of the area around them. Young players should be encouraged to look around quickly between toe taps. The third practice here brings in the exercise of the skill under competitive conditions. Individual players are competing against each other and individual teams may do likewise. Liston is coming out looking for it. The centre half forward here, Dennis Morn. Inside to Ger Parr, Ger Parr back to Dennis Morn. Oh, that's typical. O'Donnell. It comes off Henry Gavin for Mayo. And the Mayo man breaking clear on that far wing. Brian Talty is beside him. It's a good block from Brian Talty. Inside, Anton O'Toole running for it. Liam Connors with him. Liam Connors blocks down that shot. And Sean Laurie is there. Okay. Eyes open and on the ball. The blocker, Ogie, positions himself as close as possible here to Pat's kicking foot. The blocker's thigh, hips and shoulders are ideally as close as possible to the kicker's supporting leg. Both hands are placed close together in front of the line of flight of the ball, with fingers slightly apart and tensed so that they may absorb the impact of the ball. The closer the hands are to the ball, the less is the force of impact. The block is executed as the foot makes contact with the ball. Possession may be secured after a well executed block. The kicker and the blocker may alternate. Young players are sometimes inhibited at the start but performed softly early on encourages young lads and it's a skill soon mastered. It is one of the most vital skills in football even though some teams often seem defective in this art. Notice here the left footed kicker in the middle and the need for the blocker to be alongside his supporting foot. Blocking should be practiced from both sides of the kicker. When the kicker moves, the blocker should also move with him in order to get into the correct 
blocking position. All right, cool. In this practice, the kicker performs three solos before shooting for a score. The blocker moves, blocks and attempts to gain possession. The ideal termination of the blocking technique is the gaining of possession by the blocker. Uh, my advice with regards to the block I think would be uh, concerning three major points. One would be to uh, keep well into the man you, you, you're trying to block side by side, n n not to be off him at all, right up to his shoulder. The second one then is to get right in over his boot. Your hand should actually be in the far side of, far side of the ball, uh, keeping the fingers well spread and good and firm. And the third point possibly is to keep the eyes open. People are trying to close the eyes and maybe hope for the best a little bit too much. But uh, close into the body, uh, side by side with him, uh, well over the ball, hands in, in tight, and then keeping the eyes open. Uh, I think that, that uh, many people, when, 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 when approaching to tackle the player, should have, should have it in their mind to block the ball. Because uh, if you're, you know, we see too many fouls in the game, and if you're close enough to foul him, then you're close enough to block his kick. To Willie Joel Padden, rounding Brian Talty, a chance of a score, a good shoulder from Seamus McHugh, Jimmy Lyons and Willie Joel Padden, it's rather than in towards the goal, Anton O'Toole and Kevin Cahilly, Anton getting it along the ground, Kevin is still after him, the ball has gone wide, ball gone wide there, as Jimmy Kerrigan is by the ever-present Kevin Cahilly. Did we listen, Yankus? Yeah, I know, the judge is nice. Right. <coughs> the players are moving here to play the ball. Contact is made with the opponent with the area of the body from shoulder to elbow. The foot is placed firmly on the ground and the shoulder is slightly lowered to give greater thrust to the shoulder charge. Right. Good. Gaelic football being a contact game and the shoulder charge being the most common form of physical contact, there is need to spend much time performing it correctly. Players here are in pairs and they attempt to shoulder one another. This practice attempts to emphasize that players must crouch a little in order to have the benefit of good foot action balance, a slight bending of the knees, and then the transfer of weight upwards in the direction of the opponent. In the second exercise, the two players jump and shoulder each other. As a result of this activity, the players develop timing, coordination, and balance and they're able to judge the correct moment at which contact should be legitimately made. Though some young players have difficulty with the initial efforts, as is clear from your picture. Players in this practice stand on one foot and hold the other with the hand. Any player who places both feet on the ground must depart from the grid. Putting pressure on one foot by throwing the whole weight of the body onto it helps to develop strength in that foot. Each player shoulders the player nearest to him with the intention of forcing him to put both feet on the ground or to knock him over. The last player standing on one foot is the winner. And as well as introducing a competitive element, it is a practice much enjoyed by young lads. In addition to performing the shoulder charge, this practice also helps players to develop the technique of avoiding the shoulder charge. Players are now divided into groups of three. 
One player rolls the ball to the other two, who are about 10 metres distant, and they shoulder charge to gain possession. This introduces a more realistic dimension into the practice. As a variation on the last practice, the two players who first challenge for possession are facing away from the ball. On the whistle, they turn quickly and attempt possession after shoulder charging. This is a practice which also develops concentration and quickness of reaction in the players. All players receive the opportunity of performing the shoulder charge in these conditions. A further variation on this practice is where the three players are in a straight line. The middle player rolls the ball forward and the players on either side of him run to gain possession after shoulder charging. In this exercise, the player runs between two lines of players and shoulders each player in turn. All players do likewise in rotation. Now to bring the practice closer to match conditions, the player carries the ball, shouldering each player in both lines. A further progression, which would make it more realistic, is when the player carries the ball, soloing between each shoulder charge. ball across the goal if it keeps in play Stephen Joyce has gone out to it has kept it in play they're trying very hard to work it through this is Porty Kelly nice bit of ground football there back out now to Stephen Joyce Stephen's shot is high it's still in no it's not Okay. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The opponent in possession, John, is moving towards his tackler. The tackler in football sometimes retreats cautiously before the oncoming player in possession though some defenders prefer to hold their ground. The tackle is timed to be executed when the ball leaves the possession of the player carrying it, that is, as he hops it or during the downward and upward movement of the ball in the solo. The tackler flicks, tips away or palms the ball in order to dispossess the opponent. Properly executed, the tackle can win possession. The player in possession approaches the tackler with the intention of passing him by. For young players, it is well to make sure that they retreat slowly until a favourable opportunity of striking the ball from the opponent presents itself. That is, at the time the ball is actually out of the hands of the player in possession. A hasty rush by the defender at the attacker or the player who is in possession must be avoided. The attacker can easily sidestep or elude such a rush and in a match situation the consequences for the defender's team could be and often are serious.
Perhaps dispossession is a more suitable word for this skill and the player who dispossesses attempts to gain possession himself. In this practice, the players alternate after a determined number of efforts to dispossess are attempted by each boy. The player here, Jimmy Barry Murphy, is approaching his opponent, John Evans. With John about two metres away, Jimmy leans to one side, driving the foot on that side into the ground and throwing the weight of the body onto it, pretending that he was going in the direction indicated by the foot. The vigorous driving of the foot into the ground enables the player to make an immediate change of direction, sending John in the wrong direction. Practice is begun by getting attackers to sidestep imaginary players by showing the ball and then pulling it back quickly. This gets them used to performing the actions involved in the skill. In this practice, a line of players provide minimum resistance to the player in possession. Each player gets the opportunity to perform the sidestep. In the sidestep, the player in possession of the ball takes evasive action. To do so properly, good balance is necessary, good judgment as to the position of the opponent and, of course, deception. Is in devastating form in this second half. Richie Connor, now left half back, recovers Tommy Conroy. Tommy John, Johnny Mooney. Inside to Brendan Lowry, John O'Leary cuts it. Cross the centre, ball fisted down by Dom Creighton. Tom Conroy. P.J. Buckley, P.J. shot is high and it's over the bar, and a shortish kick out intended so to Ray Hazley, Brian Mullins, and this is The ball is in motion along the ground to the player Richie Connor. The ball is allowed to roll onto the toe of the boot and then flicked with the toe upwards into the outstretched hands. The player crouches slightly to avoid dispossession. Yeah, that's grand. Players are in groups of four for this practice. They roll the ball to each other without any great force in order to get them used to the technique involved in this form of pick up or lift up. Confidence is increased with success at performance. The ball is now kicked by the players to each other thereby travelling faster and making the practice more realistic and more difficult 
and more similar to a game situation. Remember, in the flick lift, the player lifts a rolling ball into his hands. In the chip lift, the player lifts a stationary ball into his hands. The ball is placed carefully. The kicker decides the exact target before beginning his approach. He approaches the ball at controlled pace in a manner that will give the goalkeeper no clue as to the intended direction of the ball. At the point of contact, the body is erect, the head is down, and the eyes are fixed firmly on the ball. The kicking leg makes contact just below the centre point of the ball, continues through the centre and follows through. Properly stuck, the penalty shot will not be stopped. He won't score this. Yep. Right. Okay. Uh, the most important thing when taking a penalty, I think, is to remember that you've got to make up your mind uh, early on where you're going to place the ball. And once you've done that, to get over the ball properly when you're kicking it and direct it for that position in which you've uh, intimated. I think uh, most players, or a lot of players, when they're taking penalties, tend to change their minds and their own up. They suddenly decide that, uh, oh God, he knows where I'm going to put it. And that, that is fatal when you're taking a penalty. You've got to decide where to put it and then drive directly for that particular spot. Uh, the important thing for young players to remember is to practice ball skills regularly. Even up against a wall, I always found it was great for getting control of the ball, belting it off a ball, coming at you from all angles, get control of it, and it's great to get your accuracy and for getting learning control properly. And the other important thing I think about when playing the forward line in football is to, when you get possession, if you're taking a shot at goal, is to be direct and to be confident. And when you decide to have a go for it, really go for it. There's nothing worse than to see a player getting a ball and half kicking it for goal and to see it dropping short or harmless, harmlessly into a goalkeeper's hands. I think that's, that is one vital aspect of it. You've got to get possession, get into your chest, be confident and go for a score and drive direct for it. Better attempt than that. Ready? Yes! Great ball, Colin. Accuracy is vital for the penalty kicker. By using flags, as in this practice, and by getting penalty kickers to place the ball between the flag and the upright, accuracy is developed. In addition, this is the area of goal where it is most difficult for the goalkeeper to make a save. Players alternate here at kicking penalties. Proficiency at penalty kicking demands many hours of practice. Portable goal posts are useful as they can be moved to the centre of the field or any other part of it to enable players to take penalties or freeze from both sides of the uprights. And in this slow motion shot, a perfect example of the well taken penalty. Attempting to shoot accurately through a car tyre adds variety to the practice and also makes the kicking more difficult as the target area is smaller than in the former practice. Yes.
to take it. And over the top, and so after 15 minutes of play. Is there with the San Francisco Rangers club. Matt Connor here now. Just about 28 meters out, and he takes the point. Place the ball carefully. The kicker, in this case Matt, usually approaches the ball from a slight angle. The supporting foot is placed alongside or slightly behind the ball so that the body is well balanced. The instep of the kicking leg makes contact with the ball as close as possible to the ground and follows through. The eyes of the kicker are on the selected point of the ball where contact is to be made. Uh. To practice the short free, players here are on either side of the uprights. From a position directly in front of the goal, the ball should be placed gradually nearer and nearer to the sideline, thereby varying the angle from which the shot is taken and increasing the difficulty of performing it successfully. Placing the ball is vitally important. The worse the weather or surface is, the more care must be taken with the placing. In close-in scorable freeze and in match situations, a good rule of thumb to follow is don't raise your head until you hear the crowd cheer. Okay, uh, for, for start taking freeze takes um, an awful lot of practice and um, you have to nearly go out every day to take freeze and um, when you're taking them and practicing you have to practice them seriously and every free you're taking you have to try and score as if you were playing in the match uh, with a couple of minutes left and um, pint down. Uh, it takes a lot of concentration and um, to get your method right as well. Um, also uh, you have to concentrate on kicking the ball right. Uh, place it right first and then kick it right and make sure and try very hard to score as you were playing in the match. Um. Michael Burns uh, knocked it down but he was pushing for the ref a free to carry. Tom Doyle. Towards the big man Liston again. Liston wins it brilliantly in the air. Sheehy goes there into support. It comes then to Sheehy. Back to John Egan. And Egan, the captain, leads by example. Bonnie Nelligan into the centre of the field. Sean Walsh taking off. The ball is again placed with great care. The kicker usually approaches the ball from a slight angle. The supporting foot is placed just behind and to the side of the placed ball. The higher he wants to kick the ball, the farther back is the position of the supporting foot of the kicker. The instep of the kicking foot makes contact with the ball. The eyes of the kicker are on the selected point of the ball where contact is to be made. And there is followed through in the direction of the target. The long free is fundamentally the same as the short free, but there is more concentration on distance, and the swing of the kicking leg is longer than in the short free.
The long free skill practice includes kicks from 45 metres, the kick out and the sideline ball. The requirement here is distance and accuracy. Technique and timing, not power, give the required distance and accuracy. Now in this practice, two bollards or flags are placed on the 20 metre line approximately 8 metres apart. Further flags are placed out from these at a distance of 10 metres. The competitive element of the practice is getting individuals or teams to kick the ball as far as possible between the flags. This player has kicked the ball between the 30 and 40 metre flags, thereby getting three points. The second player kicks it between the 20 and 30 metre flags, getting two points. The player, our team then, with the highest number of points, is the winner. Players may alternate between kicking and returning the ball. This practice helps players improve accuracy and distance. They will also be aware of the rate of their improvement. intentions of becoming a goalkeeper to take his game serious because it's, a, yeah, it's an important part and parcel of every team as a goalkeeper. You can have 14 fellas playing brilliantly outside and you make a mistake in there, it's all over for the team. So it's very important that you take your position serious. Um, it is also very important that you would have complete understanding with your backs and confidence in them. Uh, it's important that you should be calling the shots in there. Uh, a goalkeeper has more time, he has no man to mark, so therefore he has more time to study the setup of play and advise his backs and what's going on around him. Sometimes a forward would slip away from the back and he wouldn't know he was gone. That's also an important part of a goalkeeper's job that he keeps shouting at his backs and telling them where the forwards are. And Generally, if there's a, a seven man against six, situation where you have a midfield coming through 
it's really up to the goalkeeper to call the shot of who goes to who, you know. Ball up the wing now, and this is John Egan. John Egan is shot in towards the goal, and it's saved by Martin Furlong. And it's gone off Martin, out over the end line. But the referee has blown uh, his whistle and awards a free to offering for the here it is. Just watch it. Here is John Egan now, coming through, taking his shot. Martin Furlong saves the point. Owen Liston is in there before the ball comes, if you like. Furlong, and it's gone off Martin, out over the end line. But the referee has blown. We have come to the end of this presentation. We hope that it will be a benefit to coaches and to players. The Munster Coaching Council is especially thankful for the involvement of the Cork Trustee Savings Banks in making this video. Through their administration manager, Mr. Eddie Ivers, and their chief executive, Mr. Michael Condon. Uh, we in the Cork Savings Bank have been delighted to be associated with this film. We are, as you know, always interested in young people and furthering the needs of young people. Personally, I believe that a film like this, which shows young people how to play the game, will also make them enjoy it, the game far more, enjoy playing it, and indeed raise the standard generally, which is what we in the bank want to do, raise standards all around.